Welcome uh, to the IMF's uh, Governor's Talks at the 2020 Annual Meetings. It's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Minister Vera Davis de Sousa, uh, Minister of Finance of Angola, uh, to this Governor's uh, Talks. Vera, very, very warm welcome. So it really is a great pleasure to, uh, of, very nice of you to uh, accept this invitation and uh, participate in this uh, talk. Um, I thought it would be very useful if you could uh, start us off by explaining uh, how uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted Angola and uh, importantly also what the government uh, is doing to address the effects of the pandemic. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me, for giving uh, Angola this opportunity uh, to share uh, the challenges we are uh, facing and how we are addressing uh, those challenges. Um, as you may know, uh, the pandemic um, affects the countries all over the world in different perspectives. Uh, the health system, the economic environment, the, the, uh, the health of the companies, um, the, av the availability of income of the families. So in such a different manner, uh, the pandemic uh, impact uh, all over the world, Africa specifically, um, uh, and also in, in Angola. Uh, so we were coming from um, a situation where our economy uh, was facing some uh, fragilities regarding uh, the growth, regarding our uh, capacity to, to raise uh, fiscal revenues, uh, regarding a lot of pressure on the expenditure side because we have a lot of infrastructures to put in place and also uh, regarding uh, our debt. So we were coming uh, even before uh, COVID-19 uh, from a, a very fragile situation. Uh, on top of that, um, uh, we saw uh, this pandemic coming, uh, the, the borders closing, uh, the price of the main commodities dropping, uh, and our budget uh, being extremely affected. Uh, as you know, we're still uh, depending a lot from uh, the revenues coming from the oil exportation. So a drop on the oil price um, put us in a situation where uh, we were not able to keep um, implementing the budget uh, of, to, of 2020 as we uh, defined uh, at the end at the end of the prior year. So we was forced to uh, revise it. Uh, firstly, we established some quick measures like freezing, hiring new uh, people on public companies and public uh, bodies, uh, such as stop buying uh, some kind of goods and hiring some kind of service for public uh, bodies also, um, and, and uh, mobilizing funds from our uh, uh, sovereign wealth fund uh, so those was like uh, emergency measures just to avoid that in between the shock and the um, decision and of revising the budget, uh, we, we will be able to manage um, the, the drop of the revenues. Uh, so just after that, we revised the budget. We cut a lot of expenditures. We uh, decided to, to to shrink as government. We we uh, merged some ministries. We cut some public bodies, and we we also um, suspend some uh, infrastructure projects. So we did it a lot and very quickly. Uh, but on the other hand, we had to address the weaknesses uh, that we still um, uh, face uh, 
regarding our health system. Um, so uh, savings on one hand, but spending a lot on the other hand regarding um, the measures needs to, to prevent the, a very high spread of the virus, but also fighting against it. Um, so we did it um, in a very short period of time while uh, we have to, uh, as member of uh, OPEC, also to respect uh, a decision of reduction of quotas. So uh, we were suffering from the drop on oil price, but we was also um, we were also uh, forced in a good uh, way to fulfill the quotas. So we we saw also a reduction on production. And because of uh, all these concerns around our debt, uh, our ability to go to the international markets uh, uh, became uh, not possible. So it was uh, a, a very challenging moment uh, that we still uh, living with it. Uh, but we are seeing also as an opportunity to accelerate some reforms that we were implementing with the support of the IMF uh, under the program that we have in place. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, you know, uh, Angola in many ways, as you very nicely explained, has been hit not just by the direct effects of the pandemic, but the oil price shock uh, while you were still in the process of uh, working through the previous, the 2015-16 uh, decline in uh, oil prices, which made up for an extremely difficult uh, challenge. You know, uh, I, I was thinking uh, we've been in extensive discussions to try and make sure that we can find a way in which we can uh, uh, make sure to support you, uh, provide you with the resources that you would need at a difficult like time like this. I was wondering if you could uh, say a little bit more about uh, what benefit, you know, the fund resources that we provided you in, uh, at the time, like, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, has been of, uh, how you're planning to use uh, these resources, and, uh, you know, what the reforms you're envisaging uh, in the coming months are? Uh, yes, that was one of the main and we are very grateful for, for this support. Uh, in in this moment that is very challenging for us um, because um, as I mentioned uh, because of the big reduction on the flows of foreign currency um, that usually come from our oil exports um, we saw uh, a depreciation on our exchange rate. So we are dealing with a more weak Kwanzaa. Um, and because of that, uh, the impact on the debt service was also huge because we have a big portion of our portfolio, a domestic portfolio, portfolio um, linked to, to the uh, exchange rate. So if we face um, a depreciation greater than expected, uh, we also need to pay more the debt services, debt service related to this instrument. Because of that, we saw um, our ratio debt GDP um, grow so quickly uh, in Kwanzaa terms was because of the depreciation of Kwanzaa consequence um, of the less flows of hard currency to, to our economy. Uh, because of that, um, we um, were, and still, in a very um, challenging situation uh, because we need to serve our debt, um, we need to ensure the basic uh, expenditures related to, to public servants and and the functioning of the, the the system, but also related to a big pressure on the health system and 
uh, on the expenditure related to the health system. So uh, the stress on a treasury perspective is significant. So that's why uh, uh, that approval of the third review, that those funds uh, were so important and we really appreciate uh, all those um, uh, support us on this process. Angola really need uh, that support. So our main focus to re related to this money is to protect the social sector. As I mentioned, uh, the health system, uh, high-end doctors, uh, preparing them to, to reach different parts of the country, um, making our hospital more able to, to receive more people, but also our schools, because we have um, lack of water, lack of a lot of basic needs on our schools, and uh, we, we cannot manage uh, for longer uh, to have our kids uh, away from school. So that's a lot of pressure on a treasury perspective also related to, to education um, needs. Uh, so, uh, for, for that reason, that funds, uh, those funds and that support coming from the IMF board uh, is very important for us and, and we intend to, to, to spend it very wisely. Um, for for the, the near future, uh, we want to work together preparing the fourth review. Um, uh, for this, we um, we are very keen uh, to see uh, if it's possible to, to have uh, more time regarding the DSSI, uh, the Debt Suspension Initiative. It will be very useful if we see uh, more time, benef to benefit more time from this initiative that is very useful for us because give us uh, some fiscal space and breathing space to, to, to deal with, uh, with this moment and to address those challenges, uh, but also to uh, revise and to update our, our medium term debt strategy to make sure that the dialogue with our main creditors uh, continue to assure that uh, we find a win-win solution to to manage this time those difficult times. Thank you, Vera. Very nicely uh, explained. Um, you know, one of the big challenges uh, that uh, you know you've uh, been contending with, and uh, we've been trying to support, of course, is how to strike this balance between, uh, on the one hand, creating room for spending, creating room for uh, addressing the very dire health uh, spending needs, uh, social spending needs that you've had with uh, reducing uh, the resources that have to be directed towards the servicing debt at this time and how to how to calibrate that has been uh, part of the ongoing discussion. Um, you know, if you could say a little bit about the, the fact that you've availed yourself of the G20 uh, DSSI, the Debt Service Suspension Initiative, uh, also, you had some uh, reschedulings with uh, other creditors outside uh, the DSSI. Um, has that given you more uh, breathing space? Uh, how has it helped you? Yes, yes. Just like I mentioned, that was very useful and uh, uh, very grateful for, for this availability of all the, the creditors that joined to the initiative. Uh, and from also from uh, other creditors with whom we are talking bilaterally. Uh, so that breathing space was key uh, to ensure that we, we survive uh, till now <laughs> and hopefully till, till the end of year and hopefully in 2021. That's why it's so important to us to, to, to keep talking uh, with you and, and keep uh, asking your support, uh, the support of uh, of all uh, members of the initiative to, to probably um, uh, extend uh, this period and 
that that will be very useful, not only for Angola, but for all the continent, because the African country countries are um, are facing similar moment as Angola uh, with economies uh, under um, a big stress, a big pressure. Uh, and so uh, an approach that looks Africa uh, as an important partner that needs uh, support on this moment to, to, to survive <laughs> to this moment and be able to, to be a key partner of uh, uh, the challenges that we have regarding so many aspects, uh, development, inclusive growth, um, knowledge, social incl inclusion. We have a lot uh, to do together uh, in between um, African countries and, and our partners. And I think to take all the advantage of it we need to work together on a solution that allow us to, to, to minimize the effects of this moment and the impact of the pandemic uh, in, to the, the, the continent and the African countries. Thank you, Vera. Um, I uh, understand that you're already working on next year's uh, budget. Huh? Um, how are you going to be able to uh, balance uh, the, the fact that uh, we still need a more supportive uh, fiscal policy position uh, because, you know, the effects of the pandemic have been so severe. There's still quite a lot of uh, health and social spending needs uh, that, uh, that uh, need to be sustained next year. At the same time, of course, um, as you noted, uh, debt remains uh, elevated, so you have to be mindful of, uh, of uh, those pressures increasing also. So how are you thinking about uh, the framing of the 2021 budget? What are the kind of challenges that you're facing uh, as you're uh, sitting with your team uh, in the ministry? Uh, it's, it's a big trade-off <laughs> and it's a balance that is difficult to, to, to achieve. Um, but we are working hard on this and, and we are getting a lot of help from you, IMF, from, from the team uh, that is working with you on the macro, macroeconomic assumptions that we still refining. Um, we are dealing with a lot of uncertainty. We, we really uh, don't, do not know or we are not sure if we will see uh, a vaccine coming uh, this, this year. Uh, we do not know if we will see a second wave of infections and all this uncertainty make the exercise of stabilizing the macroeconomic assumptions for the preparation of the 2021 budget very challenging. But we are working closely with internally and with your team uh, to stabilize it and to make sure that, uh, first of all, we respect the, the, the confidence that we get from you uh, receiving those funds and getting the, that approval. Because of, because of that, we need to remain very conservative and very prudent to, to make sure that we remain focused on uh, keep our debt sustainable. It's our main uh, purpose make sure that our budget um, still uh, balanced, still financed. Um, of course, it's not an easy task on, on that contest, uh, but we, we are working hard for that. Uh, and we really appreciate uh, the technical support that we are getting from the IMF team um, to start stabilizing the macroeconomic assumptions. Um, it's, it's, quite um, a challenging task because uh, we have we are dealing with a lot of uncertainties. Uh, uncertainty related to the, a second wave or not of infections, uncertainty related to um, see uh, a vaccine coming this year and being available uh, for, for, for the countries. Uh, so all these make the ex exercise of 
uh, stabilizing the assumptions quite challenging. But we are working uh, internally and also with you, uh, with the technical support of IMF to stabilize it and to, to, to close the proposal of 2021 budget. Um, our uh, main purpose is to, to um, Oh no, <laughs> the confidence that we get from, from you, from the board, um, receiving the funds, getting the third review approval, uh, how uh, keeping the path of fiscal consolidation, uh, making sure that we uh, work hard to, to have a fully financed budget. It's not an easy task uh, with so many um, challenges to address regarding um, the social sector, but we, we are working hard for, for that. We are looking to the National Development Plan 2018-2022 uh, to, to pick the actions that are, are priorities uh, that we really need to, to, to address and uh, give up of those or at least um, give us some time to 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 take care of those uh, who uh, are not able for us to to take care of them uh, because of our fiscal space. That's why it's, uh, it's so important to her, to us to have more fiscal space to make sure that we can uh, address uh, our priorities. That at the end of the day is to provide better conditions uh, for for the Angolan people. Um, we we are counting uh, to that uh, a, a big program that we call it integrate integrated plan of intervention in the municipalities that it's already financed that will help us to give a big push uh, on the infrastructure uh, side but uh, we still a lot to do regarding uh, the, the social the social sector but um, our main purpose is to preserve lives our main purpose is to uh, uh, assist, uh, ensure that we are doing the right things to to diversify the economy and to diversify the source of the revenues and for that we need to uh, spend in in key areas to make sure that the obstacles to 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 free uh, trade, to, to, to the economic development, to optimize um, the, the, the potential of the African countries and uh, that we can take all the advantage of it. For this, we need to spend, but we also need to be cautious to make sure that we uh, are on the right path to, to keep our debt uh, sustainable. So it's it's a, a balance that we need to, to, to fulfill. What uh, we understand that will help us is the sustainability fiscal law. Uh, we already get the approval for it from the National Assembly. Uh, uh, on that law that we prepare with also with your support, we have uh, the specific measures that will be undertaken to put the debt GDP ratio below 60% and in the medium. Uh, in the medium long term. So uh, we have the instruments. What we need now is to manage uh, the, the, the pressure on the expenditures and um, the way our revenue is performing to make sure that our debt are under control. Thank you, Vera. Um... So, uh, finally, you know, um, I thought it would be useful to hear from you um, about your vision uh, going forward. Eh? I mean, Angola has always struck me as one of the big giants in Africa, more known for your oil exports and the, the tremendous natural wealth you have there. But, of course, it's a, you know, really one of the largest countries in the region with incredible, uh, beyond natural endowment, incredible potential to be, a, to be a, a towering economic figure in the continent, in Southern Africa, certainly. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, how, how uh, you are planning to tap into the non-oil 
uh, parts of the economy in particular. Um, and, uh, you know, macro stability has been a focus now, uh, but going forward, is it the demand more on the infrastructure investment side or is it really a lot more about uh, how to finding ways to attract uh, foreign direct investment, private investment. What, what do you see as the big challenges uh, for you in terms of diversifying the economy and tapping into this great wealth that you have? Yes, we we have I think two two set uh, of challenges. We have one set related to human resources and human capacity. And we, we need to, to keep investing on this, make sure that we uh, are investing on education, not only degrees, but also technical uh, education to make sure that our population is um, able to participate actively in this process of creating uh, this new Angola, this new Africa that, that we are building. Um, I think all African countries are working hard on this, this addressing, fighting to address this challenge of making uh, African people more able uh, to participate on the economic activity, political activity, have a word to, to, to say uh, in in different sectors. Uh, other uh, set of challenges is related to, to business environment. Uh, we understand that we still having uh, a lot of obstacles to, to, to remove. Uh, we are doing our homework, but we are also getting extra help uh, from the World Bank, who is assisting us uh, to see what the main obstacles that we need to remove to make sure that we have the proper environment to attract uh, direct investments. We know that this takes time, but we need to, to, to keep working uh, on that and, and keep removing uh, those obstacles. We already changed uh, our private investment law. We, the central bank uh, himself is working um, in a lot of reforms. Uh, they are now, to give you an example, uh, they are now working with Bloomberg to, to, to sell uh, foreign currency. It's an innovation. Um, we, we are doing a lot, even regard getting visas, regard, regarding um, proc procurement. We are now doing electronically. Uh, People from all over the world can give uh, an offer to, to sell specific goods and services to Angola. Uh, we are doing in an electronic platform. So we are doing big and small <laughs> initiatives to make sure that we create the proper environment to attract uh, private investment. Uh, but it's a lot more to do. And we intend to do it. We know it. We, we, we know that to have macroeconomic stabilization, it's important, but we also know that we have mi micro uh, challenges that uh, we we need uh, to to address. Another initiative that is good to mention is related to our privatization programs. We have a program. We have uh, more than one, uh, 195 uh, companies and assets. Um, that were state owned to be to be uh, to put to, uh, to be sell to, for us to, to, to sell to the market uh, uh, till now we we already uh, give to the private sector 21 uh, we started in 2019 uh, so we understand that it's a good number for the time uh, that we have since the start of the program and even with coronavirus. Uh, but we intend to, to continue this, this program uh, just to make sure that some companies and assets that are not working or are working under their performance uh, can be uh, more useful to the society, can generate more uh, added value, can create uh, 
jobs, we have a, a job issue um, and it can also help us to, to broaden our, uh, our uh, ability to, to, to have more fiscal revenues apart from oil. So that we understand that it's important, this program for us, not so much for the financial perspective. Of course, we want to get money from, from, from this, but more on the economic perspective of, of putting uh, those companies uh, functioning in, in, in a normal way. Uh, thank you so, so, so much for uh, this uh, brilliant uh, insights that you've been providing us on the very real, uh, very real uh, policy-making challenges uh, that, uh, that uh, you're facing. I think you've done it in a really fantastic uh, way, the various trade-offs that you have to take into account. Thank you so much for sharing uh, this with us today, okay, at the Governor's Talks. Thank you so much, Minister, for your time uh, today. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for the IMF's uh, 2020 Governor's uh, Talk. Thank you so much.